Hello, this is Paula Harris with part two of our discussion about one of the biggest cases and the biggest case I've ever covered, uh, Colonel Philip Corso, the day after Roswell. The whistleblower that really made me understand why that secret is being kept secret and that had to do with technology. Never could figure it out. I thought it would be the, probably the demise of religion or fear or whatever, but once you get the, the idea that technology is really the key behind all the UFO uh, cover up, then you understand the, the value of wanting to cover it up. I'm going to put this magazine because we've covered Colonel Corso so often that uh, X Times Magazine uh, in Italy uh, is on the newsstands and talks about these things. Maurizio, uh, uh, going back to Colonel Corso in the books, The Day After Roswell, uh, right. you just did a re-release of it, didn't you? Yeah, the new release uh, of, the, uh, of the book is, see, there are two, two editions. I mean, this is the first original edition, exactly and the same the same as um, came in 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 the news uh, in uh, in the United States, and, and this you, is you and I wrote the preface for that. I should absolutely. Say, that's an honor. I wrote the preface. Yeah. All yeah. right, this is the new edition. I didn't change anything at all. Uh, what I've done was actually redo the editing from scratch for two reasons. First, because at that times at that time when in 1940, I mean 19. 97 we were coming up with a book the pressure of a um, respect the exact date of release of the book which was due uh, to go uh, in the newsstands actually it was terrible we had to do it i mean translate and, and, and do the adaptation in about 20 days or sort of it so I understood afterwards that the first edition contained many mistakes. In, and Italian, in Italian, right? The in Italian, Italian. Not, not in English, not in English. Many mistakes in translation and not too bad translation, but actually what I want also to do is to reduce the rebounding, the, the overwhelming uh, language um, of the... Uh, that was very characteristic of the original uh, American edition, to reduce it to a better um, understandable and, mm, and simplified for the uh, Italian uh, readers. This in the second edition, that's what I've done. Uh, the, the importance of the book is that nobody could ever really um, um, debunk Colonel Corso for two reasons. First, because the debunkers who were so loud and and um, mm, arrogant in trying to debunk Corso were not in the position of Colonel Corso when he was serving the United States Army in 1947 in Fort Riley and afterwards at the Pentagon. 1960s. 1960, or under uh, President Eisenhower. And also President Kennedy, because he talked about going to Bobby Kennedy. Uh, uh, yeah. And counseling Bobby Kennedy to, uh, as far as uh, the uh, UFO uh, phenomenon and the reality of Roswell. And I believe that we do have that um, uh, uh, statement by Colonel Corso on tape. I believe that we recorded that in Rome during one of our several interviews with Colonel Corso because we were shooting all the time, shooting. He was so um, full of information. He had a fantastic um, faculty of, of, of remember everything, all the small details. Okay, so 
the the bankers in Italy were trying to say that no, it wasn't right that the uh, the chip were invented before by somebody else. Then it was not a uh, a a gift coming from outer space, not at all. But it was only something that if you had kind of course of five minutes in front of you, it will destroy you for sure. That's exactly what happened many times. And that happened in front of me because. I know, I, I want to tell a story, Modi. Yeah, go ahead. One of the greatest uh, researchers that, that was a media star went up to Colonel Corso in San Marino and said, you have ruined ufology for all of us. And <laughs> I'm not going to name him, he's named in my book. Um, and, uh, and Colonel Corso turned to me and said, what clearance did he have? Did he work at the Pentagon? Did he work where I worked? Can you tell me what his clearance was? And I, I had to laugh because this was a man that was jealous of Corso was selling, he thought Corso was selling more books than he was. And, and that is our field, unfortunately. Our field is filled with jealousy, envy, and they don't share each other's, they don't share each other's research. I so, do have a very important de detail to add. Um, just um, a year later, I went as a speaker, I was invited as a speaker in Brasilia, Brazil, for the first, um, you, uh, I mean, World UFO Forum ever held everywhere in the world. I mean, 60 speakers coming from all over the world, 60. Many were coming from the United States. Many were enemies of Kenneth Corso, such as, for instance, Bud Hopkins. Well, and that was the researcher right. that I was talking about. And the, other, and the other one was Stanton Friedman. I love, I love those guys. I mean, I really respect them as researchers and as friends. I was friends with them. Um, and I do have an interview that was never, ever published anywhere in the world. And sooner or later, that has to come out. It is in a small videotape, IA tape that I kept. And it's not in a vault, it's here in my house, in my home. And it's with Stanton Friedman. And guess what? We were sitting one in front of each other for about two hours. And we spoke about Corso for about 40 minutes. And he was going, hey, Maurizio, blah, 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 blah. And I said, are you sure at the end of the game that you are totally convinced that he's a fraud, that Corso is a fraud? He's a fraud? And he said, no, 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 no. He, admit, he admitted to me that he was doing that only for one reason, because he was not able to, um, how do you say, physically, um, uh, have a, a physical debate with Colonel Corso. He did not have the chance. So, um, how do you say, His Majesty the King of Ufology, Stanton Friedman, um, had to admit separately, you know, um, behind the scenes that he thought that Corso was for real, not for, not, not a hoax, for sure. Okay, well, <laughs> let's, let's go from there to San Marino because we only have 20 minutes. And let's talk about the reason why we, bought Cor we brought him to that conference, which was also international, because we had uh, ufologists from France. Who did we have from France? Velasco, um, or did we have somebody else? Uh, we had Boris Shurinoff. We had, uh, I think, is it Messan from Belgium? Yeah, uh, correct. Um, we had... Uh, yeah, but that San Marino was a, um, a, a moment where, when it was very, let's say, was a, a sort of, a, of a, sort of an Hollywood event to my, to my, to my, to my point of view. Uh, you remember that 
all these beautiful uh, flags uh, <laughs> surrounding us coming from <laughs> all over the world. I mean, the, you know, the important brush of San Marino, the Italians and so far so on. And he was the superstar. I mean, Corso was the superstar. Not a very important event. The important event was held secretly um, in closed doors when Pinotti, who was the, the organizer, the president, the president of Kuhn, Center for Italian UFO Studies, and, uh, and uh, the, the uh, most authoritative ufologist in Italy, um, decided to uh, uh, try again a political move, an important political move in order to have the the uh, the uh, the topic of ufology um, brought to the attention of everywhere in the world. I mean, to the um, uh, different nations. And since there were the British, the French, the Germans, uh, all together. Yeah, my he... husband was there. Th this was you want to you want to say to the nations, to the United Nations. Exactly. He wanted to propose to the United Nations. This carta, this the chart of charter, uh, charter. exactly of um, 